Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome back to the LibGDX RPG Kotlin tutorial series and I am today highly motivated. It's now already I think the sixth part that I'm going to record and that one will be an easier one. So the last one was a very complicated one I would say and also a little bit of a longer one. Uh, but we achieved quite a few things now which is really really great. So, first of all, we have now box 2D, we can move our player around, we have collision objects like this rock and this tree, and now we dynamically create and remove those collision objects. So when there are no entities nearby which are interested in the collision handling logic of our game, then such entities simply get removed and with that we won't have any issues if we would introduce very huge maps because then we don't create all those collision objects at once, we really create them on demand when they are needed and necessary and we remove them again when they are no longer needed and necessary, which is great. And in this part it's a, it's a short one and a simple one, we are just going to fix something very small which is the movement. Uh, of our entities which when they move to the left then also their graphic of course should show to the left and unfortunately in scene 2D the image does not seem to have a flip property and I could not figure out um, how to simply flip the graphic in scene 2D so I simply implemented that uh, myself and we are going to introduce that here as well that you also have an example for that and there we are going to introduce our custom actor, so a new actor which we call flip image. And the flip image is simply an image from scene to d so we take over everything that is in there and we just add there a custom property which is a flip on the x-axis and by default it is false. And what do we need to do now? So when we check out the image then it has a draw method and now we simply overrule this draw method. So there you see it has some code, so it sets the color of the batch, then it checks is it a transform drawable, then it draws in some specific way and otherwise if it's not null then it also draws in a specific way. And now we want to consider this flip information. So we simply um, overwrite this draw method and make our own implementation and what we do there, so from the original method, let's let's go back, we could simply copy and paste the code that we have here and let's convert it then to Kotlin with IntelliJ, but we go through it step by step. So as you see, first there's this validate and this setting of the color, so we take that over, we don't make a, a super call here, we make that now everything ourselves. So we have validate and from the batch we set the color which is then simply from the color the red, the green, the blue and the alpha value. And the alpha value gets multiplied with the so-called parent alpha. This is just how it is. Oh, and the patch, let's assume it can never be null because it's actually part of scene 2 d constructor. So let's remove here the question mark. Okay, then the next thing is that we want to draw something and the thing that gets drawn is this so-called drawable. And there was a check in the original method, so if the drawable is a transform drawable. And let's check that. And then here, so scale x is not equal 1, scale y is not equal 1 and the rotation is not equal to zero. Then we go inside that block here. Okay, so like that. So if scale x is not equal to one, scale y and rotation, so that is, that is the original condition. Then we are going to render in a special way. So whatever drawable we have, we draw with it. And there we have several arguments. So first of all the patch, so the, in, this, in our case the sprite patch that is used for the rendering, then an x and y position, uh, then a width 
ah, so, sorry, x and y position, then an origin, uh, origin point. This is used in case you would have a rotation. That is the point where uh, the graphic would be then rotated around. Usually you want to have the center of the graphic so that when it rotates it keeps like its original position and is just rotating like a wheel. But of course you can place this point anywhere you want. Then the rotation will of course also transform uh, the, the drawable a little bit. You can play around with that to, to see that. Um, then the width and the height, the scaling information and the rotation factor. So in the original method it was simply the, the patch and then all of these values and since it's a lot of values let's move it into separate lines. So in the original code you see here something so there's also this image x and y added and also reduced from the origin so we will also take care of that so we really take over the original code so here we reduce the image x here we reduce the image y then here we have the image width and image height here it is plus image y and here it's plus image x Okay, now when it comes to our flipping, we want to change that behavior a little bit because uh, when we flip, then we are actually not drawing from left to the right. Then we are actually drawing with uh, from from right to left, let's say, when, when we flip. So that's why here we will have a condition. So when flip X is enabled, then we go x plus image x plus we go with the image y uh, with and also we need to consider the scaling we go to the right edge of the image and otherwise it's just x plus the image x so that is the original code and also with the scaling we need to take care here so if flipping is enabled then we actually draw a negative width so we go to the left and flip if flipping is not enabled then again we render from left to right okay and the other branch so the else branch if the tr to draw is not null then we call the draw method and it's very similar to the top but without all the transformations so we just have a position and the width and the height. And what is the height? So the height is the image height times the scaling on the y-axis and the width is again, we need to consider the, the flip factor here. So if it is flipped then it's the negative width times the scaling and otherwise it's the positive width times the scaling. So the flipping really is just instead of drawing let's I call it from left to right so from from the bottom left to the right we simply draw the other way around so from the right edge to the left so this is how I would describe that and yeah with that we simply took over the original code of the image to not mess with anything there and introduced our custom uh, flip property to be able to render in a flipped version Okay, the next thing is that we need to update our image component because now it is not an image anymore. Now it is a flip image. We don't need to touch any other code because a flip image is an image. We just made a superclass out of it. So nothing else needs to be touched. And now in our move system, we are going to flip the image. So when an entity is moving to the left, we flip the graphic. And if it's moving to the right, then we don't flip it. So let's go to our move system. Let's also hide that one here. And here below we need to access now the image component of our entity, which we did not add yet so let's add it here
Okay, and down there, so we have our image components. And here, I think we used it now for the first time, but theoretically, so this system is only interested in entities with a move and a physics component. So of course they have that, but they must or they, it is not mandatory that they have an image component. So in theory, the image component could be null. So to be safe here, we use the get or null function of a component mapper. And if it is not null, so if we have an image component, then we do something with it. So here we check if from our move component, the cosine value is not equal to zero, then the player or the entity is either moving right or left because it's not equal to zero. And in that case, we are then going to flip our image. So the image from our image component gets flipped if the cosine value is smaller than zero. So if we are moving to the left. And that should be already it. So let's see. Oh, okay, we need to touch a code. So in our entity spawn system where we create this image, we need to create here a flip image. Okay, that should be it now. So let's see, we are moving to the right, looks good. We are moving to the left and then now the image is flipping. So now with that, we can now correctly yeah, show the graphic or, or let's the, let the graphic face either to the right or left side, which is exactly what we want to have with this flip behavior. And that's it. So as promised, this is a shorter part and also an easier part, I would say. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.